Welcome. In this video, I just wanted to do a quick update on my Mac Mini with the M1 processor. I've had this a little over a month. It's January 29th today, and I think I got it around December 15th, and I've been using it daily. So I want to give some feedback on it, and I want to go over a couple problems I'm having on it. So overall, it's been working great. It's been compatible with almost everything. It's been super fast. The applications that run natively on Apple Silicon are fast, and then the ones that emulate under Intel are also very fast. So if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link to the hardware in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. The link I put down there, though, will likely be the base model Mac Mini M1, and I'm using an upgraded version. I ordered mine with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte solid state hard drive. I think if you're a basic computer user where you just do email, web, and maybe some word processing, I think the eight gigabyte model will be plenty fine. One reason I went with the 16 gigabyte model is to help when I'm editing video and then I want to make a thumbnail directly after. So I'll finish up my video, I'll go to export it out, I'll jump into Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, and I can work on my thumbnail, and it has enough RAM to deal with both those programs at the same time. As far as the one terabyte hard drive goes, that has come in handy on some videos I've had huge cache files. Now another option would be to hook up an external drive, and I've done some videos on the Acasis USB 4.0 external drive, and it's very, very fast. It's not quite as fast as the internal drive, but it's still super fast. So that would be another option if you don't want to go with the large hard drive. Although the Acasis case isn't super cheap, you can move it around between computers and things like that, or you could upgrade the SSD in it later down the road. And I'll put a link below to my Mac playlist where you can find my other Mac videos. So some of the problems I've had, and these aren't all serious problems, one of them is VidCutter does not work, and VidCutter is a simple application that allows you to cut video apart without re-encoding it. And I occasionally use it. Sometime I'll be recording a long video and I just need five minutes of it and I want to cut that part out. So I double click on this and it does not open. I found an update, installed it. It didn't open either. I looked through logs. I couldn't find any reason why this isn't working. So that being said, I have, I don't know how many applications here. It looks like almost a hundred. I think this is the one that doesn't work. I don't think there's any that don't open at least. So that's pretty good odds there is this vid cutter is the only one that I can't get to open. And I'm just sharing my experience. I'm not sharing every app ever made for the Mac. I'm sure there are other issues with some other apps. So I do still have it here to remind me that it exists in case I want to look down the road and see if there's an updated version. There is also maybe some other software that can do similar things. And you can also use FFmpeg on the command line. And that takes me to the next thing is that FFmpeg on Mac ports doesn't install properly. So I like using Mac ports. It's a command line utility that allows you to install things similar to like how you do on Linux. And that's often where I would install FFmpeg, which is a command line utility for editing video. So I've made some other videos there where you can download FFmpeg and it's the Intel version and you can install that on this Mac. And it runs pretty good for being the Intel version. And I also made a video on compiling FFmpeg. So if you want that performance, you can compile it. And it is a little bit faster. So I don't know if VidCutter is going to get updated. It hasn't been updated in a long time anyway. It says August 18th, 2018. But FFmpeg has regular development and Macports is regularly updated, so I expect that that will be fixed someday. I wish I had the skill to do it myself, because it is open source software, so. So another thing I've had problems with is Ultimaker Cura, and this is software for 3D printing. I have two versions here, I think this is the latest. And I can get to all the points, I forget where it fails on this, it might be slicing or after slicing. So I can do some things on here, but I can't slice it out and get it ready for the printer it fails sometime along that line. And this is Ultramaker 4.8. And this is an active development also, so I expect this will be fixed someday. Let's see if I can find a model here. Okay, so here's a model. And you know, I can zoom in on this. And this is running under Rosetta, so this is emulated. I'll hit Slice. Okay, that worked. Okay, you can slice it. Now, can I save this out now? Let's see. Okay, that actually works. What doesn't work, I think, was preview. Oh, well, that's working now, too. Well, now I'm being made a liar. I was having some sort of trouble with Ultimate Cura on here. It might have been a different model I was having trouble with, where I was trying to change things and slice it and save it out, and it was causing me problems. But I don't remember the exact model. So I may be a liar on this, or it may be certain models that have trouble. But I know I had a problem because I have two versions here. I was trying different versions to see if one or the other worked. So next is Synology Drive. So I've done a bunch of videos on Synology NAS. 
and I like using Synology Drive. It's kind of like Dropbox or Google Drive that you supply on your own network storage device. And it's hit or miss. I just booted this up recently, and you can see up here there's an icon for Synology Drive in my menu. And sometimes when I reboot, that's not there. So it's hit or miss if this boots up. So there is a help page here, and I'll put a link below in the description of this if you have the same problem. And it talks about how you can uh, boot it up, you can run some commands and get that started up, which I've done a couple times when it hasn't booted. There's kind of a fix here where you tell it to start when you log in, and I haven't gone through that whole fix. I assume the regular Synology Drive software will eventually be upgraded to work. So I'm just gonna wait for that fix to happen. I don't restart my computer that often, so it's not a huge issue, but it is something that's kind of broken. Another thing that's not specific to the Mac Mini M1, but to just switching computers, is I was using a MacBook Pro. It was a 2015 MacBook Pro, and I switched to a Mac Mini. And the reason being is if I go mobile, I can take my laptop with me, but I rarely do that these days. So generally speaking, you're going to get better life out of a desktop computer because you don't have the battery in there to go bad, or the screen, um, things like that, or the keyboard. You can swap all those things out. So I figured getting the Mac Mini M1 right now was a good choice. Later down the road, I could always get the laptop, and I really have heard great things about the laptop. They have great battery life, and they're powerful and such. But on the laptop, the ports were on the side, so when I wanted to plug in my headphones, and I had it hooked up to a monitor, so I actually ran it in clamshell mode, so the screen was closed and I had a monitor hooked up. And I would often plug and unplug my headphones in the side of it. When I switched to the Mac Mini M1, the headphone ports in the back, it's under the USB ports, and it's really hard to get to. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. So I was kind of upset about that at first, but then, I don't know why I hadn't thought of this earlier, I could just leave the headphones plugged in. So typically I'll leave the headphones plugged in, I have my speaker up here in my menu, and then I can go down here and choose external headphones. And that's been working great. So I actually use three different audio sources. I'll have the audio come out of the Mac Mini and the speaker's not great. And then I use over-the-ear headphones when I do my video editing, they're kind of monitors. And then when I'm just listening to YouTube or something, I have a Bluetooth earbuds that'll stick in. And I just go up here to switch between the sources depending on what I'm doing. So that ended up being not all that bad. Along those same lines is it only has two USB ports on it and I do hook a hub into it. But occasionally you can have problems. If you use a USB keyboard and mouse, plug both those in, your ports are gone. Then you can't stick in a flash drive. There's no micro SD card slot or SD card slot. The old Mac Mini had an SD card slot, but it was in the back and it wasn't easy to get to. So on our older Mac Mini, we actually bought an external reader to plug in so we didn't have to reach around to the back to stick it in. So, and finally, a problem that is kind of odd is the USB 3.0 hard drive speeds are slow. So I have black magic speed test here. So I currently have plugged in here a Sabre enclosure with a Samsung SATA SSD in it. And it's a 500 gigabyte, I think. I'm not sure the exact size off the top of my head. Maybe it's 250. So it's a USB 3.0 enclosure. And when I run that on my 2015 MacBook Pro, I get around 415 megabytes per second write and 415 megabytes per second read. So I have it up here in this computer plugged in. And you can see here, the speeds are quite a bit lower. So I get 380 megabytes per second, right? And then I'll get about the same on read. Actually, I was testing it earlier and I was getting around 350. So this, yeah, so you see this is 350. So for some reason, this brand new Mac Mini M1 super fast computer has really slow USB 3.0 speeds when hooking up to this enclosure. And other enclosures I'm guessing probably are going to be the same. It's quite a bit faster on my 2015 MacBook Pro. That being said, I have that Acasis external hard drive and that's super fast and that runs on USB 4.0. So that runs in the different, the USB-C port. But if you do have data on an older USB 3.0 drive, you might get slow speeds when hooked into the Mac Mini M1, or I'm guessing this applies to the laptops too, unless for some reason they have some different USB interface, but I'm guessing they don't. So that's my feedback on the Mac Mini M1. If you have a Mac that's a year or two old and it's working well for you, I don't know that I would upgrade, but if you have like a 2012 Mac, that works pretty good for you, but you kind of want something a little newer, this might be a good upgrade. Those old Macs no longer run the latest system, which is Big Sur. Eventually, I'm sure they'll shut off security updates and such, and you may want to upgrade at some point in time. So if you don't get one of these latest ones, you may want to wait till the next generation of the Apple Silicon processor, and it might be a good time to upgrade. If you have an older computer than that, then I would definitely upgrade if you're wanting something new. I wouldn't hesitate to um, get one of these new computers. They're running great. I know a lot of people say these are the first generation, but these are not really the first generation because Apple's been using these in the iPads and iPhones for years, running the same operating system. 
and Apple hasn't come out and said this, but they probably had this system running on there for years. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they have the iPhone system running on Intel even. I mean, they can just compile these things and test them out. And then if something happens hardware wise, they can switch between the systems. That wouldn't surprise me. I could be wrong. But this stuff is relatively well tested. So it's not completely brand new. And like I've talked about here, there are a couple quirks, but overall it's been a great piece of hardware and I hope to get a lot of life out of it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.